Hey guys, welcome to our first Kotlin project video. In this video, we're going to be building a calculator application using Tornado FX, which is sort of a Java FX wrapper. And inside of this, we're going to use things like FXML, and we'll take a look at how Kotlin deals with building user interfaces and things like that. All right, so I wanted to show you guys how we create a Gradle project using IntelliJ. Now there are various different choices you can make here. You can choose JavaScript, you can choose multi-platform, JS, JVM, and Common. And these are all experimental. All we really want is Kotlin, Java. And of course, you want to select your SDK. Here I'm using 1.8. Then we want to set up our group ID. The group ID for this project for me will be com.tensor.examples with the artifact ID being kt underscore calc. In here, I'm just going to check use auto import and I'm going to use the default Gradle wrapper. So this will just install a Gradle wrapper rather than using the one that's locally on my computer. The next window, just verify your project name, and the project location, and things like that. And once you hit finish, Gradle will run and it will generate all the directories and things that you need, as well as grab all the dependencies. We do want to add a dependency to our build.gradle file. You want to scroll down to dependencies, underneath of where it says compile org.jetbrains.kotlin, put in compile no.tornado colon tornado fx colon 1.7.14. Once you drop the dependency into your Gradle file, the build should automatically run. And if it doesn't, just save the file and it, then it should run. The first file we want to create in our project will be inside of the Kotlin directory. And we're just gonna call it operator. And by default, I chose it to be a class because we want this to be a sealed class. And this is a sealed class that will have a constructor which will have a single property called X, which will be a long. We then want to create an abstract function called calculate. So here's the Windows calculator. When I push a number on this calculator, say five, it gets put into the display. Then I click the operator that I want to apply to it. And then I click the next number and then I have to click equals for it to actually evaluate. When I hit say five and then I hit plus, the addition hasn't actually applied to the five yet because we don't have the second argument that we wanna push through. And even when I push say nine after this, it still hasn't applied the addition to the two numbers that we've put into here until I hit equals. So with the seal class, the first number will be the X that we're passing through the constructor. And the second number will be the number inside of our calculate function. For addition, we'll create a class called add and this will have a constructor with a property of X, which will be a long, which is coming from our operator constructor. So we're taking in this X and we're taking it into our class add, and then we're overriding our calculate function, take the Y from the calculate and apply it to X. And in this case, we want to add the two together. We want to return X plus Y. We want to apply the same type of pattern for the next few operators. We're just going to have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Addition, where we return x plus y, then subtraction is also a class, and it takes in the x from our primary constructor, and then we override the calculate, where we take in y, and then we just subtract y from x. And then with multiplication, same deal, we take in x, and then we multiply it by y. And then for division, we divide y from x, and we return that. All right, so before we build out the logic for the view of our application, we want to build out the FXML that we'll use as a template for our application's GUI. Inside of this resources folder, we want to right click and click new FXML file, and I'm just going to call this file calculator. We also want to add a new file called style.css. This will be our style sheet. Inside of here, you'll see that there's a bunch of stuff that gets added by default. I replaced the actor pane with V box. This stands for vertical box. This means that the elements inside of this box will be laid out in a vertical manner. And inside of this vertical box, we'll have a bunch of horizontal boxes. And you can sort of think of this like rows and columns from like an HTML grid system. I'm also going to change the imports that we have here. I want to bring in JavaFX scene control label, JavaFX scene 
Layout V box, Java FX Scene Layout H box, and Java FX Scene Control button. If you really think about the layout of a calculator, you have basically a bunch of rows of buttons, and that's essentially what we're going to create for our calculator. I'm going to add ID for calculator. For our first row, we'll have a label, which will have an FX ID of display and an ID of display, and then we'll have an H box, and inside of this H box, we'll have button with text of C. This will be our clear button, and then we'll have a button with a plus backslash minus, and then a button with a backslash percentage sign, and then a button with a division sign. And I'm going to give this division sign a style class of op. We then want to add the rest of our buttons. Instead of CE, we have C all the way to the left, and then we have this, essentially this button here, and then we have our percentage, which is here here, and then we have our division where the division sign is on this calculator. For our next row, we have seven, eight, and then nine, and then we have an X for multiplication, and I should probably make this into a big X. Then for our next row, we have four, five, six, and then subtract, and all of these operations have the style class of op. We have one, two, three, and plus, and then we have zero and equal, and what we'll do is we'll expand the zero button so it encompasses three button sizes so things will look even. Let's build out our style sheet. We want to give our calculator a root font size, and I'm going to just give it a font size of 18, and then we want to grab the calculator element, which if you remember was this V box and we're going to give it an alignment of center right and then give it a background of sort of a dark gray. The next important thing is to take our label with display and make it large. This is what our display will look like. We want it to be like a big rectangle and we'll give this like a fairly bright white so that we can see the text inside of it. We'll give our buttons just a little bit of a brighter gray than the background and then we'll give them border with a slightly darker gray and the rest of it is fairly straightforward. Then as I mentioned before, we want to grab our button zero and we want to make sure that it has a width that is three times the size of a normal button. So we have a normal width of 60, multiply that by three and you get 180. So that's all the styling we really need. Let's jump back in and start coding our view now. We'll create a new Kotlin file called calculator and here we go. So we have class calculator. We want this to extend view and make sure that it's extending tornado.fx. If you have any doubts, then you can manually import tornado.fx.glob import to import the entire library. And you'll see that uh, calculator itself will have an error because there are a few properties that we need to override. Specifically, the property we want to override is the root property. This is the root of the XML file that we created. Override value root, and then we say that the root is a type of VBox, and then we want to say by fxml and to get in vbox we just import javafx scene layout vbox after this we want to create a late init variable for our display and we'll have our display be a label type so we'll bring in javafx scene control dot label and we'll have to annotate this with at fxml so that it knows that we're getting this from our fxml document now we need to create an init block we'll use this init block to grab all the objects that we need from our our FXML document. So we need all of the buttons and we need the display. First, we'll set up the title of our application. I'm just going to call it KT Calculator, but you call it whatever you want. Then we want to call on root and we want to use this lookup all function. This is sort of like the query selector function from JavaScript, where you can grab all of the elements with the specific ID. And in our case, we want the ID of button. We're going to use a for each block to be able to go through and iterate through each button give them an on-click listener. So basically all we'll do is we'll say, okay, we want B, which is our button, and then we want to pass that through our closure here, and we want to call B set on mouse clicked, and inside of this, we'll call something else that we're going to create in a moment. Then we want to create another event listener. This is for the keyboard events. So before going forward, we need to make an import on operator as a glob import so that we can get all of the classes inside of it as well. Now we can access the sealed class from outside of the sealed class file, but we can't access the classes that are embedded in it. So that's why we're making this glob import. 
Well, first, we want to create a variable called state. This will be of type operator and we'll automatically call our add class on it. So this will automatically add zero to the next button that we type in or press on our calculator. When we first open up the calculator, it will have zero inside of it. Then we'll create a function called on action. This will take in a variable of fn, which will be of type operator. And we'll set the state equal to that fn so whatever operator we click on plus the number that gets passed through and then we'll change our text display to an empty string we want to create another property for this class called display value and this will be of type long and we'll give it a getter and we'll say when display.text is equal to an empty string we want to make this value zero otherwise we want to take display.text and convert it into a long so any of the numbers that we pass through our calculator will be passed through as strings and then we'll convert them to longs and put them in this value. And this is the primary function that we will be calling this one called operator. We pass in x which is a string. So we're going to make this function private. First we want to check our x versus this regular expression pattern. So this regular expression pattern checks to see if x is 0 through 9. And if it is, then we just want to put that into our display text string. Otherwise, if we have like an addition sign, then we want to call our on action function with the add class inside of it and our display value. Basically what we're doing here is we're checking to see if we have a number or an operator. And when we have an operator, we want to call the logic to make that operator work properly. So for plus, it's fairly straightforward. Subtract is also fairly straightforward and division is fairly straightforward. Then we have our percentage. We make a closure and we'll call on action add and we'll take our display value and we'll divide it by 100. And then we'll take our operator and we'll set that equal to the equal sign so that it will automatically produce the result of the display value divided by 100. For x, which is our multiplication, and this needs to be capital X, by the way, we are just going to call multiply with display value inside of it. For C, we just want to call add zero so that we clear everything. For the plus minus, we want to make another closure. We'll call on action and then we'll add a negative one times the display value. So like for instance, if we have a 10 in there and we hit the negative sign, then it'll convert it to negative 10. And then finally, when we call equal, we'll get the state.calculate, we'll call the display value, and then we'll convert it to a string and we'll put it inside of our display text. All right, so now that we have this operator function, let's wire up these other parts. Remember we were taking B and that was our button, and then we were creating set on mouse clicked events for each button. And inside of each button, when we click on it, we wanna call our operator, and then we wanna call B as a button and get the text from the actual button itself. So if we click the button of one, one, it'll send one through as a string. For our add event filter, we call a key event key typed. And then if the person uh, types on their keyboard a return or an enter, then we just call operator with it character. We put it to uppercase and then we want to replace the return character with the equal sign. So basically what this will do is it will look for any of the key values on our keyboard that are corresponding to the values that we have inside of our XML. So we can type in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero, as well as add, subtract, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But with enter, we wanna correspond enter to the equal sign. All right, so that's all we need to do for our calculator. Make sure you have the correct imports. If you bring in, for instance, the wrong imports, like the swing key event, it will not work properly. So just make sure you have the right ones. Now we want to create our main application. This class will extend the app class that we get from Tornado FX. And this is just our entry point for our application. Inside of this class, we want to override our primary view. And if we point it towards our calculator class, our calculator class is our view and it extends Tornado FX view. So it should allow us to actually bring in the style sheet and work with the fxml file. Then we want to override the start function. This is the function that literally launches our application. Inside of this, we just want to add import style sheet. So this will import the style sheet that we created called style CSS. And then we want to set the attribute is resizable to false. And then we're going to call super.start stage. Now to be able to run this application, I've installed the Tornado FX plugin for IntelliJ and you can get it fairly easy yourself. And when you load up an application like this, 
this, it will automatically say, oh, well, go ahead and configure Tornado FX. All you have to do is hit yes, and then it will give you this little icon. And you can click this icon and you can hit run, and this will allow you to run the application like you would normally. The other way to do it would be to run Gradle from the command line, and that's really not that difficult, but I'm not going to go through that right now. All right, so here's our calculator. You can see here that we do have a few stylistic issues. We can type in numbers and stuff. We can take 9 times 6 and hit e equals and it gives us 54 and it seems to be working properly. Though honestly not being able to click the buttons or seeing the buttons being clicked sort of is weird. So let's fix that. So we just jump into our style sheet and we add button armed and then we add a background color that's different from the normal button color. If we reload our application, you can see here now when I click on a button, it changes the colors. So it actually looks like we're interacting with the application. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you disliked it, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night, guys.